Lifeline family. Yeah, glad to see all of you. Truly, it's by the grace of God, today we can be gathered here. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Before we start, let us commit this time with a word of prayer. Father, thank you, Father, for today. Truly, Father, we acknowledge and we know, Father, truly it's by your grace alone, Father, that we can be gathered here today, Father. Father, I pray, Father, that as we are entering into a new pillar, a new monthly focus, Father, I pray, Father, that you will speak to us today, Father. Use me, Father, as your instrument to speak forth your word with clarity and simplicity, Father. And most importantly, Father, that your people will be able to grasp your word and will be able to live in it as well, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. So today, church, we have entered into a new pillar. And what is our pillar? Reckon. And last four months, we have learned about chosen, adoption, acceptance, forgiveness. To know about how we have been chosen, how we have been adopted, how we have been accepted and forgiven, it's not enough. We got to reckon. Now we are entering into reckon. Reckon that we are righteous, we are complete, we are heir and we are free. So, what is the word reckon means? What does reckon means? The word reckon, I try to search, in the Greek is called logizomai. Logizomai, which literally means to take into account. To take into account. Just imagine, uh, uh, if let's say you have uh, 5,000 ringgit in your bank. You reckon that you have 5,000 ringgit, which means you are not just imagining. It is something that is real. right? It is not imagination. There's another one, uh, there's another word, uh, I think some of the pharmacies here might know. It's called a placebo. Placebo is basically something that is not real, you think is real, it becomes real to you. For example, if you are not pregnant, but you really want to get pregnant, you really want to get pregnant, but you are not pregnant, you will somehow think that you are pregnant. You will have morning sickness, you will have uh, many things that a uh, normal uh, pregnant woman would have, even though you are not pregnant. So many people... Um, Nowadays, they, they are not born again, but they think they are born again. They feel that they are born again. But actually, that is not reality. But to reckon is not something that is not real. To reckon is something, we take into account something that is real. That we are truly righteous. We are truly sinless. We are the heir of God. We are complete in Christ. We are free in Christ. And this is something that already happened to us in the spirit. So to take into account... Basically, how we should realize, how we should believe, how we should unite in the faith. Amen? And today, we're going to focus on one verse that we keep on repeating from just now. Taken from Romans chapter 6, verse 11. It says, Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the sermon title is taken from this verse, entitled, Dead to Sin, Alive to God. And if you read in the New King James Version, Romans chapter 6, the heading is actually this, Dead to Sin, Alive to God. Let us read from verse 1 to 14. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of 
His resurrection. Keyword, knowing, our first pillar, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon, reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust, and do not present your members as instrument of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instrument of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. So from this passage of scripture, I think the first week of this year, I shared this as well. We can see the three pillars actually. Knowing, knowing all this, knowing that we have been baptized into Christ, we are buried with Him, we rose again, we have the newness of life. Knowing this, what happened? And then, now we are entering into the second one, which is reckon. Now that we know all those, we got to reckon ourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And in verse 13, it says, do not present your member as an instrument of unrighteousness to sin. So this word present, uh, this is New King James Version. If we read in the King James Version, it actually used the word yield. Neither you ye your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin, but you yourself unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. So this, I believe, is where we see our theme. After we know all this, chosen, adoption, acceptance, forgiveness, we got to reckon. After we reckon, we got to yield to the presence of God, strength of God, wisdom of God and the call of God. And going back to our main verse today, we got to reckon ourselves dead to sin and alive to God. And this is basically God's original intention for all of us. God's original intention for us is to be alive to Him, that we are dead to sin. And before Adam and Eve fell into sin, Actually, they are dead to sin. They are alive to God. They can have fellowship with God. They can, God can walk in the evening and talk to Him. There is no separation. When they were in the Garden of Eden, this is the original intent of God. That we are alive to Him. That we, we are not alive to sin. This was original intent. And after the fall, what happened? The opposite happened. Instead of dead to sin, alive to God, they become dead to God and alive to sin. When in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, what God has said, instead of being dead to sin and alive to God, they become dead to God. They become alive to sin. That's why God is separated from them and they were chased out from the Garden of Eden. So now, God wants us to come back to His original intent, which is to be dead to sin and alive to God. What separates man from God? Sin. It's because of sin that we cannot have relationship with God, cannot have fellowship with God. Because of sin is the one that is separating us. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 to 2, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. No, his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God and your sin have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So today, we have been separated 
from God because of sin. Sin separates us from God and we become dead to God and alive to sin now. So the only way we can come back to God is to do the opposite. Now we got to be dead to sin and alive to God. That is God's original intent. And today, I'm going to share two points, which is very, very easy, which is the title of today's message. Point number one, we got to reckon yourself dead to sin. All of us fell into sin and became sinner because of our forefather, Adam. Let us see in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sin. We know that um, we, we became sinner not because we want to become a sinner. We were born as a sinner. We have no choice. I cannot born today and say, I don't want to be born as a sinner. I want to be born as a righteous. No, we have no choice. Because our forefather, Adam, sin, sin entered into the world. All sin. No one can escape. Every one of us, sin. And sometimes we got the tendency of thinking sin is just something that is, um, something that I do wrong, uh, I curse people, then it's a sin. I lie to someone, then it's a sin. I kill someone, then it's a sin. But sin is actually missing the mark. As long as we are not hitting that mark that God wants, it is sin. The sin comes from the word hamatia, which means missing the mark. And I'm sure all of you are quite familiar with this. Mark chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, where it says, For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things comes from within and defile a man. Yes, indeed, all this is sin. This is something that I'm not supposed to do, I do, then it's a sin. What about something that I'm supposed to do, but I didn't do? Do we know that that is also a sin? Let's say I know that telling uh, Rachel the truth is something that is I'm supposed to do. But if I don't do that, that is also a sin. It's not just doing something wrong that is a sin. Not doing something that is right is also a sin. We can see this in James verse 14. It says, Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So if there is something that I'm supposed to do, something that is good that I'm supposed to do, but I didn't do it, that is also a sin. And how can we, how can we actually um, fulfill the righteousness of God? It is impossible because I may be able not to do something that is wrong. I'm, maybe la, I'm righteous. I restrain myself. I'm not doing something that is wrong. But what about something that is right that I didn't do? That is also a sin. So God's standard of sin is very, very high. And none of us can achieve it. And that's why we need the righteousness of God. 2,000 years ago, when Jesus came into this world, he was baptized by John the Baptist. That is the point that all righteousness were fulfilled, as mentioned in Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. And when Jesus was baptized, he took all our lifetime of sin, past, present, and future. All of our lifetime of sin has been passed upon the body of Jesus. When he died on the cross to pay for the penalty of our sin, we too died with him because we are united with Jesus through his baptism. When he died, we died. When he rose again, we too are together, risen with him. And that's why today we can be dead to sin. It's by faith in believing in Jesus' baptism. We become one with him. We are buried with him. Our own nature buried with him. We have a new life in Christ. We can see, just now we read in Romans chapter 6, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death? The key word here is we have died to sin. 
We cannot live in sin anymore because we have died to sin. How? Because we are baptized into Christ. Therefore, we will bury with Him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. It is only when we are baptized into Christ, become one with Him through His baptism, we can be died to sin. We can be dead to sin. And we can live in the newness of life. And the following verse, in verse 7, it says this, For he who has died has been freed from sin. This is a very interesting verse. He who has died is freed from sin. Which means if we are dead, if we we are dead by faith, we are free from sin. Imagine Leon owe the bank. One million. Imagine. He don't have money to pay. As long as he is alive, the bank will hunt him. The bank will hunt him until he pays his debt. How can he be free from that debt? The moment he died, the bank cannot actually go and find him. Maybe the bank can find the family, find somewhere else, but cannot find him anymore. Just like what Brother Jeremy shared, the Bible always equates Sin as debt. All of us have debt. And we cannot pay for our debt. The only way to pay for our our debt is to die. Just like the scenario of the bank. If as long as I am alive, I need to pay for that debt. I need to pay for whatever sin that I do. But if by faith I died, I don't have to pay for that debt anymore because I died. The only way to die to sin is to unite by faith through Jesus' baptism. When Jesus died, we died. It's no longer we who live, but Christ lives in us. That's why the gospel is so, so important. When we are united with Jesus through his baptism, when we die, we have a new life to live. We don't have to live in guilt, in condemnation, in, um, in whatever sin that we have. Sometimes, right, we, we who are born again, the fact is this. The fact, this is fact. Huh? We are dead to sin. But we still want to live in sin. Why? Sometimes I wonder, why my flesh so weak? I don't want to do this. But I did it. I want to do this, but I cannot do it. Why my flesh so weak? And why am I always tempted to do something that is not pleasing to God? Do you know that we can only be tempted if we have desire for it? We cannot be tempted for something that we don't have desire of. For example, Hazel. <laughs> Hazel don't like seafood, okay? Hazel don't like seafood. And no matter how much I tempt her, come and eat this prawn. (laughs) Come and eat this fish. She will say, no way, no way. I will never touch that because she don't have desire for it. I, I don't like pork. Anyone who give me a pork, I will be like, no way, I don't have desire for it. But what if someone gives me fried chicken? Well, I'm very hungry. If I have desire for it, I'll be tempted by it. And that is how temptation is. And sometimes we wonder, why am I always wanting to sin, habitual sin and all this? Because we have desire of it. The only way is to die to that desire, die to that lust, die to that flesh of us. That's the only way we can live in the newness of life. In James, it says this, James chapter 1, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted 
when he is drawn away by his own desire and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. So whenever we sin, right, we will feel deadness. We will feel guilty. We will feel condemned. Oh yeah, I did it again. I'm not supposed to do. Oh yeah, I did it again. You feel deadness. Because you give in to the temptation. Why we give in? Because we have the desire. The only way is, God, I'm tempted. Help me. Help me, Father. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to scold people. I don't want to do this habitual sin. Help me. I have the desire. It's only human uh, if we have the desire. It's human nature. That's why we got to reckon ourselves dead to that sin and know that my body is to live for the glory of God. And I don't want to dirty my body and uh, do something that is unpleasing to God. The only way is by faith, unite ourselves once again. Yes, sometimes we may fall. Sometimes we may do mistake. But come back. Always come back and remind ourselves once again of the gospel of God's righteousness. How Jesus has saved us through his baptism, death and resurrection. And it if, if it is possible, memorize some verses. Like what uh, Esther shared. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, Bible verses are very powerful. When we are tempted, we say, God, yes, I'm tempted. Yes, I have the desire. I'm enticed by it. But I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, the only way that we can be dead to sin is by uniting with Jesus, die with him, and rose again. By faith. By faith. And this is God's original intent for us, to be dead to sin. We no longer live in sin. Because when Adam fell, he became dead to God and alive to sin. That's why he hid himself. And he actually covered himself with a fig leaf. Why? Because he became conscious of sin. He became alive to that sin. And he became dead to God. He cannot have a mutual relationship and fellowship with God anymore. And God wants us to be revered back to his original intent. And the only way is through Jesus' baptism, death and resurrection. Now that we reckon ourselves dead to sin, second point, we got to reckon ourselves alive to God. Alive to God. Romans chapter 6, verse 11, our main verse for today. Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We cannot be alive to God by our own effort and our own doing. The only way to be alive to God is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in fact, there are many Bible verses that speaks about this, that we are alive to God in Christ Jesus. Today, we cannot be alive by ourselves, no matter how much we try. We can only be alive to God in Christ Jesus. In Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, it says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. So it is in Christ that all of us has been made alive. It's in and through Christ that today we can become sinless and righteous. We can have fellowship with God once again. We are no longer dead. Our flesh has been cut off and all our sin has been removed when Jesus was baptized. When he died, we died. When he rose again, we too are risen together with him. And today we are alive in Christ. It's no longer we who live, but Christ lives in us. And the life that we live, how do we live now? Do we live um, just to fulfill the pleasure of our flesh, to just do the things of this world and ultimately go back to dust? Like what 
Benji and Kyra said, vanity, vanity, vanity. After all that we have achieved, after all the money that we have earned, after all the degree that we have attained, after all the children that we made, grandchildren, so what? Ultimately, we will go back to dust one day. What is important is faith in what God has done for us. That is the one that will bring us back home. That is the one that will ultimately secure a place for us. If we fulfill all everything in this world and very successful and everything and lose this faith, what's the point? There is no point. Many people are so uh, enticed with the things of this world or technology or this or that without realizing that there is emptiness in our heart which need to be filled only by God. In Ecclesiastes, it says there is a space in our heart that only God can fill. No matter how much we try to fill it with our friend, with partner, with money, with fame, with popularity, with uh, status, whatever, nothing can fill that heart. Only God can fill our heart. And it is by faith we walk daily, knowing that we are dead to sin. You are dead to something, you got to be alive to something. Eh? You cannot be just dead to sin and not alive to God. You got to be both. Dead to sin and alive to God. By faith. Amen? In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 6, it says, By grace through faith, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the, in the son of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So in this verse, we can see that we have been made alive. How? With Christ, together with Christ. How? When Jesus was baptized, we are baptized together with Him. When He rose from the dead, we too are risen together with Him. And not because of what we do, not because we are so great, not because I am so rich, not because I seek God, not because of anything that we do, but because of his great love which he had for us. It's because of his love for us. That's why today we, we can be made alive together with him. By grace you have been saved. It's nothing to do with us. It is by grace that we are made alive today in Christ. Amen? And my second last verse, Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. This is the verse that we read just now, 11 to 13, it says, In him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hand by putting off the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made a life together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. Again, whenever the Bible says how we have been made alive, it always used together with him in Christ. It is only in Christ. It is to emphasize that we cannot be alive by our own doing, by our own desire, by, by what we want. We are alive only when we are united in his baptism. We are not putting off our own nature, dead to sin by our own work, but through his baptism. We are buried with him in baptism. 
when Jesus rose from the water, right, come out from the water, symbolizes of his resurrection, we too are risen together with him. That's why today we have a new life. Today we can be alive in God because we have been united with him through his baptism. And we got to reckon that. We got to reckon that we are dead to sin and alive to God. We are dead to sin and alive to God. And that is how we actually live a righteous life. Because if we don't reckon ourselves dead to sin and alive to God, when our flesh rises up, when we sin against God, we may feel that we are not righteous. We may feel that, I don't think God saved me. I don't think I'm even uh, worthy of this uh, gospel. We will have all sorts of thought. And we don't think we are righteous anymore. Because we are alive to sin now. And we are dead to God. When we are dead to God, we will not come to the, our senses that we are righteous. What is righteous? Righteousness is basically right standing with God. And there is a character, my last verse after this, Abraham. The Bible says that he believed God and God reckoned him as righteous. God reckoned him as righteous just by his faith. Not because he was circumcised, not because he was such a good guy, not, not because of anything that he has done, but because he believed what God has said. Romans chapter 4, verse 3 says, For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed in, trusted in God, and it was credited to his account as righteousness, right living and right standing with God. So today, the only way we can be reckoned as a righteous child of God and to have the right standing with God is by faith alone. It's only by our faith in Jesus' baptism, death and resurrection, we can be reckoned as righteous. This one is Amplified Version. Some translation, it will use the word reckon here. Is it credited to take into account that he's righteous? By what? By faith. Because he believed what God has said. Today, we too are like that. Today, the only way that we can be reckoned as righteous child of God is by faith. By faith, we believe that we have died to sin. By faith, that we believe we are alive to God. And we got to constantly, always, moment by moment, live in this truth. This is not a placebo effect. Eh? Something that is fake that you think is true. This is real. I have the righteousness of God. That's why I'm righteous. It's not something that I made up by myself. Many people deceive themselves thinking that they are safe, where in fact, they are not safe. But today, we are not like that. We got to reckon something that is real. If I don't have 5,000 ringgit in my bank account and I reckon that I have 5,000 ringgit, I'm deceiving myself. That is not the truth. But if I have 5,000 ringgit and I reckon that I have 5,000 ringgit, and that is true. And today, we got to reckon ourselves as the righteous child of God by faith through Jesus' baptism, death, and resurrection. Amen? With that, I've ended my message.